What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Revival. My name is JJ, and here we are. Final video on my top 100 games of all time, numbers 5 through 1. Coming in at number five is if I were to make a top five personally influential video games, uh, in other words, games that influenced me personally and had the biggest influence on me, uh, this would definitely be on that list because of what it did for my opinions and how I play games and what games I play. That is the Mass Effect trilogy. I have a whole video talking about what the Mass Effect trilogy did for me as a gamer, and how it completely changed my view on not judging a book by its cover. Definitely go check it out if you're curious. Long story short, prior to playing Mass Effect, I pretty much stuck primarily to JRPGs because I just didn't see anything else out there that caught my interest with regards to storytelling in video games. I saw the box art for Mass Effect and immediately thought, oh great, another bro shooter. When playing it for my old podcast, however, I realized how wrong I was and how jaded I had been due to my preconceptions of so many other games. I literally walled myself out of some fantastic experiences for arbitrary reasons, and Mass Effect showed me that I needed to venture outside of my comfort zone. You could say because of all that, the Mass Effect trilogy is a big reason I began collecting, so that I could get to some of these older games that I missed out on while growing up due to putting blinders on myself. If you haven't played these games and are into huge sci-fi epics, there's no better time than with the semi-recent re-release of the trilogy. Even though this next game is at number 4 on my list, uh, I would honestly go so far as to say is this is probably the best video game that I have ever played. Uh, not my personal favorite, obviously, close, but it is definitely the best game that I have played as far as just the complete package and everything in there and that is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Another game where I've made an entire video dedicated to it, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is hands down the best video game I've ever played. Sure, there are a few that I personally love more due to nostalgia, but objectively, I can't think of any other single game that felt like it was a complete masterpiece to me in almost every way. The world is expansive and detailed, the lore is rich with history, and even some of the small side quests left just as big of an impression or more on me as the main story. The world of The Witcher 3 just felt alive, and I couldn't stop playing once I started. I even dove in head first into the every bit of DLC content, which I typically don't do with modern games. The visuals are stunning, the combat is extremely simple but kept me satisfied, and the different environments you'll travel through are something to behold. If there is one game on my entire list that I would say everyone needs to play, it's this one. At number three is a game that I, man, I, I mean, you, you've all heard me whine many times about the Final Fantasy series uh, needing to go back to its roots and everything like that. Well, this game did that. Uh, coming off of seven and eight, which were amazing games, um, I really was kind of hoping for a more fantasy setting, and that's what we got, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience in Final Fantasy IX. A good cast of video game characters can stick with you for a variety of reasons. A big one for me being diversity. I love a big, diverse cast. Final Fantasy IX, with its whimsical fairy tale like story, brings a cast of characters that is as diverse in personalities as it is in looks. Everybody in this game brings something new to the table. Whether it's Zidane's desire to experience life to the fullest, or Vivi's quest to find his meaning for existence, to Dagger's inner conflict of choosing between her mother and her people, there's so much rich lore here to experience. Final Fantasy IX also happens to have one of my favorite character arcs in video game history in Steiner, starting out with blind devotion to the crown but going through a personal transformation of really learning about doing what's right. 
Even aside from the cast, what Final Fantasy IX represented for the series as a whole still sits with me. It represented a return to form. It brought back a lot of what early fans of the series were missing, and according to series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi, best embodies his original vision for Final Fantasy from the beginning. The combat is a little slower than some of the other games, so it's tough for me to recommend as an entry point for someone who's never played a Final Fantasy, but overall it's an exceptionally high point in this series for someone like me who grew up with the classics. At number two is one of the most complex storylines I've ever seen, period, let alone in a video game, and that is Xenogears. It would take a stupid amount of time for me to list all the things that make Xenogears great. It's also not a game for everybody. The gameplay can be a bit slow, it's extremely lengthy overall, and it would probably take more than one playthrough to really grasp the story in its entirety. Not to mention the fact that there's a whole bunch of additional lore in the Xenogears Perfect Works book, which gives a lot of much needed context. That being said, if you really like to dig deep into a game's story, analyzing metaphors and philosophical ideas, it would be tough to find a more bountiful gold mine than this game. The first time I played through it when I was younger, I fell in love with the base elements of Xenogears, the characters, the world, and the multiple layers of combat. When I played it again years later, it clicked a lot more, and I was able to process things that I didn't catch the first time around. If you really want the best possible experience for this game in my opinion, play it alongside watching the deep dive into Xenogears from the guys over at Resonant Arc on YouTube. They cover it better than anyone else I've seen, and shed even more light on a game that I had already fallen in love with. And finally, at number one, I mean come on, there was never any doubt, it's never gonna change. Final Fantasy VI. Do I really even need to say anything here? Anyone who knows me or has seen my channel knows that Final Fantasy VI is my favorite game of all time. I can't think of anything better fitting for me personally when it comes to cast of characters, music, gameplay, and nostalgia. Ironically, I'm not typically a big fan of the steampunk aesthetic in general, but Final Fantasy VI is covered in it and I can't get enough. Heck, I love the character of Locke Cole so much that I named my cat after him. Everything about this game from top to bottom hits me right in the feels even just thinking about it. The sense of adventure, each character's individual backstory, and the crazy amount of freedom in the second half of the game just hit home for me on a level that no other game even comes close. I love the idea of having no main protagonist, and instead learning about the world and people within on equal footing. With themes like love, suicide, family, war, and even a full-blown opera built into the story, Final Fantasy VI is now and always will be my absolute favorite video game of all time. There you have it guys, my top 100 video games of all time. Um, Adrian, thank you again for getting me the Japanese copy because I think this is so cool. Um, I Thank you guys for sticking with me on this whole ride um those of you that did obviously if you skip to this part then thanks for watching still uh but there's a whole list of 100 games that you can go check out and, and see my opinions on and, and just games that i love and mean the world to me and and like i said I, I this stuff changes all the time and even with new games coming out like i'm i'm currently as of recording this playing uh zelda tears of the kingdom and my god that game more than likely would would be on the list as well um, I just didn't play it when I put this list together because it wasn't out yet. Um, and there are plenty of older games I still haven't played as well. So, I mean, my I think it was actually like one of the first videos I did, but Suikoden 5, I had just finished as I was putting together the list, and it just barely made it because I was like, I I have to put this on there. It's so good. <laughs> so I there there's so many games out there that I still get to play. There's... I've got a mountainous back backlog to get through, and I'm happy about that because, you know, I'll never be bored. Uh, but um, I, I'm just super excited to, to get to all these new adventures, and, you know, I want to see these games get topped. I want to see, uh, you know, better stuff come, come out, and I want to see games that I missed that, you know, people love that I would love to jump in and experience. Um, things like, like Metroid I hadn't played until recently. Uh, the Suikoden series, I had not played like a few of those games, and I'm so glad I have now, but these are games that I, I just finally played in recent years. Castlevania, I just finished for the first time this past year, and I loved it. 
Um, I, I mean, there's there's so much out there that that I missed out on that I didn't give a fair shake to back in, back in the day, and and just because this is my top 100 games of all time, that doesn't necessarily mean a that these are the best video games of all time. Obviously, these are just the ones that meant the world to me as I was playing them and once I finished them. Uh, but I want to see what else is out there, and I can't wait to do that. And I, I really, really, again, appreciate you guys sticking with me through this whole thing. Um, so let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, thank you again, and keep on gaming.